Hey, today I wanted to do a bit of a haul video because I finally got a PlayStation 4. I've been really excited to get a PlayStation 4 because there are so many really cool games coming out this year and last year we kind of set ourselves a deadli deadline of we will get it by Final Fantasy 15 and that didn't happen and we splurged a bit for Christmas. I think we spent around $500 including the console and bought a whole bunch of games and I just wanted to talk with you guys about the games that we got because I'm really excited for them. And yes, I do realise the irony of getting mostly PlayStation 3 remasters. First up, because it's on the top of the pile sitting in front of me, is Journey the Collector's Edition. I really wanted Journey on the PlayStation 3, I didn't get it. We actually didn't get that many games for the PlayStation 3, we just sort of were in a bit of a financial drought I guess. For being able to spend money on games, uh, mostly just got Kingdom Hearts, but Journey I am really excited for, it looks so beautiful, I know it got so many awards, and I'm really looking forward to that different type of gameplay and storytelling where there are no words or anything as far as I understand. I am not sure if the experience will be a little toned down because I know it's meant to be one of those games where other people are playing alongside you but you can't communicate with them and I guess if no one else is playing Journey it might not be the same. The other two games in the collector's edition are Flow and Flower, they're by the same developers. I don't actually know anything about them but I'm hoping they're going to be a nice little uh, experience too. Ratchet and Clank is next. This one's actually for my husband. I embarrassingly own I think like five or six different Ratchet and Clank games and I have not played any of them. It was always in my to be played pile. I intend to still play it and now I'm stuck with whether to play the new one or to play the original. I do know they changed the story a little bit. I have seen Bryn play this one and it looks incredible so I am kind of swayed by the really new graphics but then I don't know if I want the original experience. Shovel Knight I actually played at my sister's when she got her PlayStation and I really liked the pixel art, I liked the platforming, I liked the puns and that everything was for shovelry. I'm looking forward to picking it up on my own console. I found the first level that I played fun. I think it will get more challenging as I go through, which I like in a platformer. I do tend to be one of those rage quitters for platformers if they're too difficult, so I'm hoping it won't push me that far. One of the coolest things about this edition though is that it's got an instruction booklet and I love instruction booklets like you wouldn't believe and it bums me out so much that they don't have them anymore. The booklet has really cool artwork, it has character explanations plus all the items, it even has the fun little notes section at the back in case, I don't know, I used to write my shortcuts down in there, I don't know what you guys use them for, but I love that it was included in it. Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls were another couple of games that I wanted on the PlayStation 3, so they've come out in the collection for the PS4, so I figured better graphics, why not get it? I really like consequential games where you, the decisions you make have huge impacts and I prefer games that have that little bit of nuance. I have played ones like Fable where it feels like it's either stab the guy or let him live and it's like, well, I wonder which one's evil. So I'm really looking forward to these two and seeing how much my soul hurts with the crushing consequences of my terrible decisions. We got the first three, Uncharted. We do want to get Uncharted 4. We just wanted to play the first three first because I'm one of those people who likes to play things in order as often as I can. We actually got this one in the Heavy Rain collection in a deal. I think it was both of them for 80 bucks or something like that. So five games for that amount of money is pretty damn awesome, especially in Australia. I'm really hoping I like the Uncharted series. I am new to Tomb Raider. I can talk later about my Tomb Raider experience and why I'm so late to Tomb Raider, but I really feel attached to Lara Croft and when I first saw Uncharted I felt like, well, what do I need to do Lara Croft for because I've already got someone pretty kick-ass to play as. I've heard wonderful reviews about Uncharted 4 though, um, so I really, really want to give it a go because I like scaling and jumping across things and shooting people. Tearaway Unfolded honestly picked up because it was cheap. I think it was only a few dollars or something like that. It looks really cute, which is a plus in my book. It also says it's from the creators of Little Big Planet, which is a game I really do want to get. It just wasn't there at the time when we were looking at everything in the Christmas sales. I got Dishonored because I'm getting into stealth games. I've always played Sly Raccoon, which isn't really a stealth game, but then I tried Dishonored 2 at Supernova in Adelaide last year. 
it was on the PC and I didn't like the PC control so much so when I went to get Dishonored 2 for the PlayStation which I did not get because it was really expensive but the original one was a lot cheaper I thought hell yeah why not get it I have started playing it and it turns out I'm quite terrible at stealth but I am finding it really fun and challenging to not just walk straight at the bad guys which is generally my experience in gaming is they try to lead you to the path to them or whatever but I like that Dishonored really encourages you to be like oh maybe I can scale that wall even though I wouldn't think of doing that. Corvo can teleport or whatever he can do so it's, I'm finding it really fun working through the game mechanics I guess they are. Last but not least is Squenix because I love Squenix games, I'm a huge fan, I am playing World of Final Fantasy already, it's Pokemon and Final Fantasy together and what could possibly go wrong? I'm hugely attached to Lan already, he annoyed me in the first half an hour or so and then he just grew on me so fast. He's so funny. I have paused playing it at the moment, partly because Bruno took me by several hours even though he gave me a head start and then mostly because I'm playing Final Fantasy 13 at the moment and I'm about three hours, four hours past disc three changeover so I'm really wanting to steam through to the end of that and then I'll get back onto it. Final Fantasy 15, I have not started playing, I have seen a friend play it and oh my god, I want to play it so much, it looks so good, I liked the snapshots, it just looked awesome. I know some people haven't liked the battle system, but then some people didn't like the battle system out of 10 or 12 or 13 and it's, people always have something to complain about in Final Fantasy so I'm just interested to see what Squenix did this time. So those are the games we got. I'm actually really happy with the mix that we got. I think we got quite a few variations in gameplay and genres and that sort of thing. The only thing I am disappointed with is that we couldn't find a co-op that we wanted. We did have one of the guys at the store try to upsell us with a second controller and it was like well nothing's two player, local two player anyway these days so what you know, what would we actually need a second controller for? What do you guys think of the range of games that we got? Do you think it's good mix or not? And what did you guys get when you got your Playstations if you got a Playstation or, you know, if you're like me and have to wait years after it's been released? What would you get as your first buy or must have? That's all for this one and I will see you guys in a Let's Play soon. Bye!